Oh, we're on air. What's up, guys? It's Coding Boy Fifty Six back at it with another video. Today, we're gonna be trying to finish an anti-stall program. Yeah, so great start to an intro there. Anyway, um, we're gonna be making an anti-stall program. So for those of you who don't know what a stall is, um, basically if you've ever interacted with a robot before and you set the motor to move a certain amount of degrees and the amount of degrees is not satisfied, so it's moving and suddenly there's an object that intercepts it like that. Now it can't satisfy that amount of degrees. So it's just going to keep on running power to the motor until the uh, amount of degrees is satisfied. Which means your robot is now just wasting precious seconds and it's not going to complete. Meaning you have to interrupt it and it's going to cost you penalty points on the FLL table. Welcome to my life. So uh, today we're going to be making a program that takes that into account and make sure uh, that does not happen. So let's jump into it. Super long and awkward intro. Damn it. So just to let you guys know, this motor solid detection program is going to be in the form of a my block. So it will have the exact same parameters as a regular move block. Let me just set this to degrees. And it will have speed, power, oh, sorry, my bad. This is power, and that is degrees. And of course, you want to be able to customize the port we want. So we will put that option over there as well. So usually it's good practice to uh, save your parameters as a variable. If you're working in a C, um, in a text-based programming language, like Robot C, this gave you a little sneak peek there. If you're a nerd like me, you probably paused and saw that code. But it's basically uh, going to force you to say that as a variable. So because this is a graphic-based language, it is going to kind of uh, make some of the things more visually appealing and it simplifies some of the concepts. So that's one of the convenience you have in um, EV3. So we have to read this value and the approach we're going to take to this uh, program is to see the data from one motor encoder and then measure from the same motor encoder but after a certain delay and what this does is tell us if um, the motor position has changed and if it has then we don't have to worry we just keep on going but if it hasn't that means there's a stall and it needs to skip over this part of the program so I'm going to put a weight over there for 0 0.0 0 0.01 seconds. Sorry if the keyboard is a little loud in the audio. I don't know how to get that fixed as of yet, but I am working on it. So now we need to measure the uh, motor encoder value. So just put port and plug that in right over there. Actually, you could just plug the parameter right over here, but um, I'm not going to. Now we measure the value after and before and after. So now we need some way of comparing it. And what better way than the compare block? So we take a good old compare out of here in the red and we say if it's less than or equal to. We plug that in there. And then we plug this in over there. So if this value over here after the uh, weight is less than or equal to this value, well, it shouldn't be less than, but it definitely won't be greater than. Then we know that there has been a stall, and this will exit once I set this to logic. So we could just plug that in over there. And we'd be done, except we want to make this customizable. So we want to make this travel a certain amount of degrees so instead of having a regular motor block out here like that we're gonna turn it into an on and then you could 
well, I mean, I'm only going to use speed once, so I'm not going to make an entire variable for it. So we'll just plug the parameter directly in there. But what the other variable that we just lost um, is a uh, dis distance or degrees. So we want to make this keep on going until either the uh, distance has been elapsed or a motor stall has been detected. So in that case, we're going to be using uh, the logic operator, one of my favorite blocks. It is right over there. So instead, we're going to plug this into A. And this basically allows you to take any um, input of logic, uh, any two inputs, and it returns an output. So in the AND operator, it um, just makes sure uh, if both of these are uh, true, then it returns a true. And if any one of these is false, it returns a false. But the one we're going to be using today is an OR. So if any one of these is true, uh, then it will return a true value. So we'll just go ahead and plug that in. Now we need to use yet another compare block. And we check if this value over here is less than uh, the desired amount of degrees. Or greater than or equal to, actually, because we are thinking about this in the true scenario. So we simply plug in the amount of degrees desired over here, which I think I have had a variable that I made before, so we don't need to worry about that. So once again, I want to kind of tell you how the graphic based programming environment is much different than a text based, uh, in um, that normally you'd have to save the value of the measurement in a variable and I'd plug that in because I can't be using it the same amount of times or otherwise it would slow down my program because uh, if you didn't know this before you have to know it now every time you measure it it does take a lot longer than the rest of your program all these other things like logic and math those are simply computational your computer does them in an instant so now just let's look over our program again. You're taking a measurement of um, your motor encoder. If it is less than, uh, if it is greater than or equal to the amount of degrees uh, specified, then it will exit because of this logic over here. And then if not, it waits and it will check another, another time. And this time, if it is less than or equal to the prior value, then it will it will also exit, so that's pretty neat. And now we can just take all this and convert it into big fat my block. So we'll just select this, and you can see that blue is taking up the loop. That's kind of annoying. Sometimes it doesn't get the loop if you have it in a my block. So let's just call it um, MSD or motor stall detection, whatever you prefer. The icon can be. This seems appropriate. You are checking the motor encoder degrees. So our first parameter will be the port. And it's a number, it's an input. And you don't want a slider because it's just from one to four. I don't know. I, you can use it, but I don't feel like it's necessary. So I will use this icon. I think that works fine. And then the next one is speed. And I think the horizontal slider will work well for this because you can slide it around negative 100 to positive 100. And the icon can be something like that. That's good for speed. And finally, our distance parameter. All these are inputs, by the way. This is distance. We'll put that in degrees just so that we don't uh, get it confused with uh, rotations. And this can be unlimited, so I'm not going to put a slider on it. I think what would be a good symbol for this? Ah, okay. So this is what I usually use for degrees. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to do for port. I have to limit it from 1 to 4. Wait, I'll, oh, then I'll put a slider on it. Ah, oh, you know what? What the heck? I'll just do it. <laughs> So minimum is 1, maximum is 4, the default value is 1, that's fine. And we can finish it. 
and we just need to plug these in. So our degrees, oh, I need to make a variable for that. I forgot. And wait, that's, yep, port is over there. And actually, I want to clean this up. I want to make it look a little neater. I don't want to get the wires all tangled up. And that's pretty much it. Oh no! If you look at but if you look at that logically, you're putting the port before, and the port is undefined here. So even though it doesn't look as neat, um, it's not gonna work. So instead, I'm just gonna plug this in directly. It's not much of a distance anyway. It does look a little more tangled, but at least it works logically. And that's pretty much the entire program, guys. So let's head to the outro. <laughs> Actually, before the outro, we have to test it on the robot. So actually, let's see it on the robot. Download and run. And right before I do that, I'm going to reset the value, even though the program does it by itself. So for this test, it'll just be on the computer. And uh, as you can see, it rotated 245 degrees. And the demand was 200. So that's quite a bit off. That's more than 25 per, well, almost 25% off. And that's, um, believe it or not, the actual accuracy of a real motor move block. And the reason for that is, well, I'm assuming they don't use any PID or proportional algorithm to smooth out the motion and slow it down as it uh, gets closer to its target. It just senses the um, motor rotor, <laughs> the motor encoder rotations just like we are and the moment it sees that it's at the desired target it shuts off power and that's really inaccurate because uh, there's still quite a bit of momentum behind the motor and just gonna keep on spinning so um, this isn't about um, that but I just wanted to let you guys know that so now we're gonna see the actual um, robot move its uh, treads so I'm gonna download the robot and you, as you can see, it's spun. So now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to simulate a load by um, kind of stopping the wheels from spinning by pinching down with my hands. So as you can see, um, it only went a little bit before it noticed that um, it was under load and I had um, pinched the treads. And that's because uh, our algorithm was actually working. It sensed th that there was a load. It, otherwise, it would have just kept on going the moment I let go. Now, I can show you an example of that with an actual lift arm, but um, I'm not as skilled of a builder as I am a programmer, and I'm kind of lazy. So uh, this is kind of going to be a wrap for now. See you in the outro. So, as you can see, your boy has a world map over there, which means he is t currently taking geography. Another place where you can learn geography is Skillshare, which this video is sponsored. No, guys, I have never got a sponsorship in my life. I have no idea what I'm talking about. But in all seriousness, can you guys get this channel sponsored? Because I need the um, money. <clears throat> Support. Support is uh, what I meant to say. So, uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And get my video sponsored. <laughs> See you next time, guys. Quality. Quality content right there.